In Luke chapter 1, there's a lot of joy going on. In Luke chapter 2, there's joy, joy, joy. So let's pray. Father God, we pray that you refresh us by your spirit today, that you would help Jesus to grow bigger in us and us to grow bigger in him, that we might have the joy that you want us to have and that joy that we share with the people around us. Amen. Well, today I've got a little thing I'd like to share, a little story if you can. Next slide. Share a story of a time when you've been shown favour or chosen for something special. And how did that make you feel? And if you're really game, you might even share how might that have changed you as a person? I invite you to share a little story with someone near where you are, a kind and friendly person. I'm sure you've got at least one good thing that's happened in your life. It's nice to be chosen, isn't it? It's nice to be favoured. Have you, have you paused to ponder about the word favour? It means uh, approval, support, fondness, liking someone or liking something. When we say something's our favourite, like Shiraz is my favourite red wine. Oh, no, it's not a hint at all. My, my cup overflows, don't worry. Forty odd years ago, you cannot imagine how amazed I was to discover that Leanne favoured me. It came as a complete and utter surprise and it still fills me with wonder. And my life hasn't been the same since. She's helped me to become a better version of myself and hopefully she feels the same about me. In Luke chapter 1, the angel Gabriel announces God's favour to two people who were certainly not expecting it. And last week we looked at Zechariah, how the angel Gabriel came to Zechariah and told him that even though he and his wife Elizabeth were getting in their twilight years, they were going to have a baby. And what was the name of that baby? John, who became John the... Okay, and what was John's purpose? What was his role? Okay, to tell the people and prepare them for the Lord Jesus. In today's Bible reading, we see that Mary was also surprised to receive a visit from an angel. And yet, Gabriel also brings good news to her. Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. Now, that word favour is the same word in the Greek for the word Grace, it's charis. Mary, you have been graced or favoured by God. Oh, okay, well, how? The angel Gabriel tells her. And note, just as when the angel appeared to Zechariah and told all the things that this John would do, the angel here is telling all the magnificent things that Jesus is going to be and do. And listen to the, all these things. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you will name him? Which means? Okay, comes from Joshua, which means the Lord saves. The Lord saves. Yasha is to, he saves. And the Yah on the end is God. God saves. The Lord saves. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. In other words, Mary, God has chosen you to bring his Messiah into the world. Mary, God is about to keep his ancient promises that he made to King David. Your son and God's son, Jesus will establish and reign over a kingdom that will last forever. Talk about a wow moment. I bet she didn't see that coming. But what an honour to be chosen. Having never been intimate with a man, Mary is puzzled how this is possible. And maybe... Maybe our next thought was, oh, I wonder what Joseph's going to think about this. Gabriel explains, the Holy Spirit will come upon you 
and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. Now, this word overshadow, I've got it in bold there. This, the Greek word for that is epischiasdo. Epi means upon or over and skia was um, shadow. So overshadow. Now this word only comes up twice in Luke's account of Jesus. And in the New Testament, it comes up five times, and three times it's about the other time it happens in Luke. Can anybody take a guess when this word overshadowed comes up in Luke's account? It happens in the transfiguration of Jesus, when he's on a mountain, and who's he talking to? He's glorified and he, you know, he's there in divine glory and he's talking to a couple of Old Testament greats, Moses and Elijah. And it says, a cloud overshadowed them and terror gripped them as the cloud covered them. Then a voice from the cloud said, this is my son, my chosen one, listen to him. Now friends, in both cases, the awesome glory of God is present but in a way that doesn't hurt or destroy people. At transfiguration, the glory of God is veiled in a cloud. Friends, in the conception and life of Jesus, the glory of God is veiled in our flesh and blood humanity. Friends, God didn't hide his glory in the highest heavens. And he didn't just keep it um, confined in the holy of holies, stuck behind a curtain in the tabernacle of the temple. Friends, God reveals his glory to us in his son, Jesus. In Jesus is all the glory of God for us to see in a way that doesn't destroy us, but blesses us. Friends, Every time Jesus bestows favour on people, God's glory shines on us for our good. We see it in his love that restores broken and hurting people to wholeness. We see it in his word of authority as he calms the storm, as he drives out demons, get out of them, and they do. And as he raises dead people back to life again. We see it in his favour towards people who were regarded as nobodies in his culture. People labelled and despised as unclean or sinners. People who were exploited because they were poor or rejected because they were foreigners. People who wondered whether God even noticed or even cared about them. Friends, Jesus shows us the compassion and favour of God for all people, even you and even me. Greetings, you are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. If an angel of the Lord spoke these words to you, would you believe them? Finding favour with God. Isn't that something we all long for? And yet sometimes we might wonder if it's even possible. We might have grown up in a family where any favour needed to be earned. No matter how hard we tried, some of us could never gain the approval of our parents. And if we take that into our understanding of God, it will lead us into exhaustion and despair. Friends, we can live for days or weeks or months or even years without any connection with God at all. We, might, we make mistakes. We give in to our desires. We say and do things that hurt others. We might be striving so hard to make something of ourselves, we don't even notice the needs and hurts of others. Honestly, friends, 
but the terrible things I've thought or said or done, I don't deserve God's favour. And maybe you felt like that sometimes too. Yet in his compassion, God looks at us with fondness and extends his favour to us in Jesus. In his unconditional love, God treats us with kindness and mercy and favour. Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. These words aren't just to address to Mary, but to you and to me and to everyone. The son of man, the son that Mary carries, will bring God's favour to all. At the cross, he will take the blame for all our fears and mistakes and failures so we can be forgiven and reconciled with God. And through his resurrection, we are given a hope and a future in God's restoration story for his world. And friends, isn't that good news for everyone? Yes, everyone. God wants everybody to receive his favour. Friends, in Christ, you are greatly loved. In Christ, you are fully forgiven. And in Christ, you are totally accepted by him. In Christ, God favours and delights in you as his precious child. And God wants to do life with you so his favour can bless others through you, that as his favour rests and his grace gets to you, that you would be sharing that in some way with others, the love and the good news of Jesus. God wants to do life with you so you can share in his glory, in his kingdom, that will have no end. Friends, may God grant that to us all. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this wondrous good news. Good news. A saviour comes into the world through Mary. And we know that you have experienced the brokenness and hurts of humanity. And we thank you, you came in a way that didn't obliterate us, but your glory was hidden. So it would come to us through your acts of love. We thank you, Jesus, for giving your life for each one of us and rising again to give us a hope and a future. So Lord, let your good news swell up in us and fill us with joy in this season to your glory and to our good. Amen.